Watch him. Watch him. He wants to swim. Where you go? Oh, there he is. There he goes. Do you see him, Nathan? Yeah. He's free. Trout. Colorful fish. Swimming, squirming, trekking. Sad to say goodbye. Freedom. Goodbye, Nemo. <laughs> Trout in the Classroom started back east many years ago. The idea behind the program is to have kids learn about the habitat, life cycles of fish, the watersheds, and if we can build a stewardship out of that, then as they get older and they'll hang on to that and maybe pass it on to their kids. The real beauty of the program is that it's the Department of Fish and Game working with local partners like Trout Unlimited and the local schools to give kids a real life experience with wildlife. As you watch these children today releasing the fish, you'll see that it's one of these experiences that they'll carry with them their whole life. Well, we uh, assisted uh, Trout Unlimited and Fishing Game with this Trout in the Classroom program. Trout Unlimited and Fishing Game give a training to the teachers who participate, and I helped out with that uh, training by giving a talk on life history and the habitat requirements of trout. Uh, many of these species are endangered, uh, partly due to their life history and the impacts to their habitat. It wasn't until I saw Chuck with, with the fish in his classroom that I got a little interested. And lo and behold, I'm here and you can do it. So if you're a little bit tentative now, it's really a lot of fun. But the key is your support system. So with Greg and with Chuck and with Ethan's help, it, that is like the hard stuff. And, and you are free to do the um, teaching and they'll provide you with the content and all the other things that you need to get those fish um, hatched and released. These eggs that the classrooms will be getting today um, are a Shasta strain of rainbow trout and they were spawned January 5th where they were held at 58 degrees Fahrenheit and um, eyed up uh, which is a term when you can see the eye on the egg um, on January 19th. This morning I came in and we have a small individual baskets that we put the eggs into to where we can put them into their little uh, bunches of about 30 eggs or so for each classroom. And the hatchery people have folded them up in a little piece of cheesecloth so the eggs are in here. We put the cheesecloth in a cup and then we build a little lattice work here with these craft sticks to keep the ice that we put in here. The ice will now rest above the eggs. The ice will drip down, keeping the eggs cool. And then we put a lid on them. They go into the coolers that we have. And then the idea of having them cool allows us to transport them a greater distance without any problem. Some of these eggs will be a couple of hours away from here before they're actually put into an aquarium. It's almost like a nursery for baby fish to be hatched from their eggs, but we get to be the parents and the eggs are going to hatch in our classroom. Okay. Just stay in your seat. You, Oops, you'll get sorry. to see them. A little drip there. A little drip. A little water. Oh, I can see their eyes. I can, I can, I can see most of them. Are those their eyes? Okay, so I'm going to take these eggs and I'm going to put them right there in your container. You can count and see how yeah, many eggs we room. have. This is the um, first group, so no eggs are inside yet. So take a look. Count up how many eggs we have. I want you to drop the egg right along the glass here, okay? And it will just drift to the bottom. Right over. Oh, he did it. Nice oh, you job. can't really see that. What about the temperature? Ooh, it's cold. cold. It's cold inside. What's the temperature right now? 52. All right, Avery. Avery Trout. You go. You go. Okay. Yeah. Right by the, the glass. Yeah. Oh, that's so. There it is. Trout Unlimited brings us the eggs from the hatchery, and the kids look at them before we put them in the tank so they can identify the eyes and the backbone and even see the yolk sac inside. Today we're going to be talking about a watershed because we have our trout and water is very important for them. But it's not like a tank and it's not just one place. The watershed is a whole big area of land. And in that land, there are mountains, there are lakes, 
There are rivers. All of those things are made up of water. water. Now, everyone here is going to make watershed of your very own. Well, you'll take your blue and you'll show, well, that's where a river is going to be. This river is going to run all the way down out to the ocean. Right up here, I think there's going to be a lake because there's a little indentation up here. And what does the red show us? What is it? Stuff that humans made. Stuff that humans made. Watch what happens when the rain comes. Watch what happens. Now look, look Josh, look where all your rivers are. Look where all the, the lakes are going and look at how it mixed here. You can see how there's humans impact on your watershed. Look very carefully along the rocks. See if you see anything that's... It's about two weeks after we have them, they hatch. And that's a very exciting time for the kids. They are always watching to see which one is hatched and how far they've gotten out. They are very small and they don't have their fins quite developed. They have a big yolk sac that they feed off of so they don't need any food. And they tend to cluster underneath the, uh, the rocks that are here in front. That's why we put the eggs right in front so the kids can see them come out. In first grade, we have fourth grade buddies. You can see that these are, they start out as channels. They become tributaries. They join or converge, come down and join the major river. One time, our buddies came to teach us about the watershed and wetlands and how important they are and what they do for our environment. The tributaries build off of the, uh, of the greed. Those are the main rivers of California. Both fourth graders and first graders can work on a key that tells us on this paper what each color represents on your branch. Avery, do a little more right here. Once they start to develop their fins, they become fry and they start to swim um, up in the water column. And the kids come in in the morning every day to see how many more swimmers we have. And that's when we start to put a little food in. So um, their yolk sacs are pretty much gone. They've buttoned up and they are ready to go out and be released. We write in our trout journals, so they learn a lot through um, literature and language arts. We have done pictures, diagramming with labeling the fish parts, making models of fish. So it really reaches across so many boundaries. Wednesday morning, we're going to take our kids to Lake Lagunitas for our big field trip. It's a big outdoor education field trip. And our focus, of course, is releasing our baby fry. When we get to the creek, we take our bucket and we find a nice uh, level spot in the creek uh, where the water's not rushing too fast and we put the bucket in so that the temperature stabilizes for the fish. We'll have little cups for the kids. Maybe take two kids at a time and we gently take them to a spot where the, they can kind of get down on their knees on a rock and gently pour the fish into the water. Yeah, it's, it's really special. It's a nice moment to see the fish kind of swim in their own habitat. Last year they hung around a little while so we could watch them kind of sit there and swim. I think the kids get so much out of this program. They learn about the native plants and the animals that are around them and how to take care of them. They get to experience life from an egg all the way up to a little fish and then they get to feel responsible about taking care of that and we hope that they take that stewardship with other creatures and, and other things in our environment as well.